Welcome back. In this lecture, we will discuss embeddings, which is an important concept to understand how RNNs can be used in language translation or other language classification use cases. And so here, is, uh, here are the objectives. So in an earlier lecture, we talked about some key challenges with RNNs. And uh, right now, we're going to focus on the third of those, which is how do you perform an initial encoding when the data is not a vector? Because text is, is not a vector. So as we've been saying all along, a major motivating use case for RNNs is to reason about natural language. And earlier when we talked about architectures, we said, hey, here's your X vector. It's a word. Well, to some of you, that might have seemed kind of weird because our language is, you know, not made up of numbers. Uh, you know, it's language. It's made up of letters and stuff. So, you know, how do we bridge that gap? Because neural networks are designed to be used on vector representations of things and not, not words. So let's uh, talk about that. One technique that's widely popular is what's called a one-hot embedding. So here you have a dictionary of all possible words, so we'll just say n number of words. And for each word, you have an n-sized vector where the position of uh, that word is 1, and all the others are 0. So let's take a look at an example here. So let's say this is our dictionary. We just have a couple of different pet types, cat, dog, fish, turtle, and snake. And so that's five words in the dictionary, so those, these will be vectors of size five. And here's what the vectors look like. All we're doing is this, uh, the one is just in a different location for each of the different words. And that's how uh, you transform the words into vectors using a one-hot embedding. Now, this is a very simple way of doing business. Um, we could also look at learned embeddings, which is more sophisticated. And so the concept is take words in the dictionary and embed them in some kind of lower dimensional space, maybe with another machine learning technique. And the advantage here is you can actually have smaller vectors, and you could have similar words be closer together within that vector space, which is a, a nice byproduct um, out of this as well. Now, there's a whole area within machine learning called representation learning, and that is the study of, of finding clever ways to do this embedding. So that's it for the lecture on embeddings. Uh, stay tuned for more content.